Okay. Um, so, last week, uh, there was another mass shooting. The reason why I bring this mass shooting again, and in this last video, is because <laughs> of the obvious, that this mass shooter being a target individual. Matter of fact, in my brain, they were just trying to create some battles of the things to manipulate and create the storylines and narrative that kind of even counter their reality and their manipulations but um it's their job they are trying to create a false reality so let me just introduce myself my videos you've watched a lot of my videos very similar videos over and over and over basically repeating the same things that i've been experiencing and talking about how they've been manipulating memories um thoughts and creating false narrative and creating stories and try to paint me as somebody i'm not in so many ways and utilizing this department defense technology that can do so much to us target individual because we are human subjects we are human subjects and in this program what happens is in this human program in this human subject well in this program where they're experimenting and actually developing a technology that is able to manipulate us in so many ways they can force us to gain stimulations reactions f feelings memories thoughts uh, falsify all kind of reactions they want us to believe that this is something happening organically and they've done a lot of things to kind of create and paint a, a storyline that is falsified because today what's happening is we are being degraded in so many ways obviously physically we're losing a lot of our health in so many ways um physiologically bones joints organs a lot of things are just becoming worse and worse in that level but also psychologically mentally and they try to paint this false persona with when you target individual one thing you, you're going to hear commonly said is the, the way they try to create this false persona paint us as pedophiles and manipulate a lot of things to create us that false persona and this mass shooter <laughs> this mass shooter um was a mass shooter and said and by the way let me just say that this is the the deadliest mass shooting that we've experienced in 2023 and since the in the united states is the number 10. so this is not any kind of mass shooting is a mass shooting that took a lot of life actually 18 people died what you're seeing here is the pictures of these 18 people died including you know ch ch one child but a lot of these people died who had family father of five father mothers of you know, or fathers of one year old two year old of three like a bunch of people these people life death impacted so many other people's life kids will never see their parents again you see their father anymore they will not see their like there's so much damage that would be done because of this target individual going crazy and losing his mind and killing 18 people and the reason why he went there is because he was pushed to that level where he lost his mind he decided to go this way he's like these people are keep calling me a pedophile they keep saying i'm you know and this is something you've heard so many others say you've heard so many other target individuals including me saying the way they manipulate me the way they put these thoughts the way they manipulate is so they then they try to 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 do this pedophilia type of torture and make you experience things that you will never experience and then manipulate memories create this narrative memories that just it's just <laughs> go in every ways you know i was i was yesterday i was with with this woman and while i was with her they would try to bring this child in my head they'll make me think the way they made me experience this it's funny usually what they do with me is mostly with little girls right they make me experience this disgusting stimulations and reactions so disturbing and then they try to say no what we did was just we mapped it to you when you were a kid that's how you see things when you're a kid remember what you did as an eighth grader as a child it's like you delusional trash and matter of fact then to right before this this um this this video 
I was watching this comedian that looks like a child. Like he's he's twenty one years old, but he's not a child. Right? He's he looks he looks t- like a child. He's he has one of this condition, and that makes him look like a child because he never hit puberty, and he's an adult. Uh, and they then brought up the memory they falsified when I was walking before nine August August nineteen two thousand nineteen, when I was walking down. There's this like thirteen year old kid laying there just looking at his phone, right? Like, and I'm like, what's why what this? Like, they they I, at that point I was suspicious that something was happening, right? I'm like, what what they think like? This? I'm looking at this like this serious, and I look at this kid up and down. I was like, it's sad, like really. At that point, I don't I don't understand how low they can create a falsified reality. It's so retarded, right? So I'm looking at this kid up and down, like okay, whatever. And I walk, and I, as I'm walking away, somebody comes out yelling, "He's too young for you." And then runs back, and I turn around, like she w- walks back, running. I was like, such a gimmicky, it's creating this theater. It's like you pathetic. You think uh, that this thirteen year old boy, this like what <laughs> delusional trash. But most of the time, what they do is like toward little girls, and try to make me be subscriptive of these manipulations, and try to change you into something you're not. So yesterday I was with this woman. We are having sexual moments. And they would make me think of a child. And then after it's over, they try to make me think of this baby again and try to create sexual arousals. Right? They can manipulate your libido. They can make you experience sexual arousal. You're going to hear that. And they will make me think of this baby, try to create uh, also at the same time create a sexual arousal, like boost my, my, my libido, my, 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 my sexual arousal, and make me think of a child at the same time. They do these things where they can do that at the same time. And wanted me to be sexual with this woman again, so they can condition this more. And it, they like to have these dialogues in your brain. I'm like, and I'm trying to say that within my brains, like you guys are just trying to, like, bring me, like, make me stimulating again. So, so you can make me think of the child when I'm with this woman, sexually. And they twist the things around in my dialogues and try to say, oh, oh, so you're saying this kid makes you sexually aroused? No, it's like you guys stimulate me, create a sexual arousal and make, make me think of a child. And you want me to have sex with this woman and then you can start conditioning this child that you've been manipulating to, to think in this way while I'm having sex with this woman. They do these nasty things to us, Targaryen. They really are trying to condition us to experience things. That they literally want to, they are rewiring your brain so you can have reaction to our children. These people are disgusting trash. Disgusting. But reality is what they've been doing that to others. So you have to be strong. You have to. Because if you let yourself go, what happens is you can lose your mind. You can do something harmful like this man did. He ended up killing 18 people, including a 14-year-old child. And for me, if you go through in all my other videos, I've made my first video was made in 2020. If, if you go into all my memories, uh, all my, my videos, you'll see the patterns of what they've been doing to me. The manipulation of my memories, the manipulation of my reaction in real time, the way they've been adding more to the manipulation they make me experience, the way they make me react to th- to children, to anything, the way they make me have dreams that are disturbing, the, f- the, the way they've been creating narrative, the way they've been painting a narrative, try to pick up one thing and then try to create that, that as that as a proof that this is what I'm experiencing today is naturally. The fact that They've been manipulating me in so many ways, my perceptions, my thoughts, going all the way back three years ago. And then you hear this man saying the same thing in a certain way, saying that, you know, they're saying these things about me. And then he just lost his mind and just killed 18 people. You, then you hear that the entities running this program, obviously I relate to the intelligence community. We talk about CIA, DOD, DARPA. Those are the entities running this program. Those. What you hear. Raping children. CIA agent raping children. You're going to hear all of that. You hear this, these entities. That have. These agencies. That have problems with, with. 
agents and and contracted peop- agents downloading child porn on the government devices. The the patterns of these people having a problem with pedophilia is super high. But then you hear the testimonies of targeted individuals saying the exact same thing that I'm experiencing. Saying that they're forcing me to try to change who I am, make me think in these pedophilia ways. Manipulate my memories. Forcing me to get sexual arousals and make my this sexual arousal aim toward children. This weapon have the ability to manipulate your sexual arousals. Saying that they torture even children in a sexual way. Hurting children in horrible ways. This is not the only mass shooting that you that's coming from somebody who's a target individual. You're going to hear that too. In every way, you see the patterns of what they've been doing. It is as clear as ever. You know, these people can't even say the name of a pedophile called Roy Mother Picked Up Kids. But they are here trying to create this persona and make you acceptive of these manipulations. To try to change you in these nasty ways. And your whole ecosystem, your co-workers, your colleagues, your employers involved in this to make you accept this. You're going to hear this. You're going to hear all of that. They manipulate us in, in this disgusting ways. You have neighbors, people around you who are supposed to make you accept this. You don't even hear that. And as they try to dismiss reality, it's like, not nah, real. Yeah, it's not real that 18 people died, huh? It's not real that the person who killed 18 people was saying he was hearing voices and these voices were calling him pedophile. It's not real that this woman saw a child being suffocated. It's not re- real that these women are saying they are... Being hu- their human subject to this program where them and even the young child are subject to this developing of this technology. It's not real that a woman literally said, this, she's hearing a lot of females saying these things, talking to her via V2K. I mean, how much validation can one have in lifetime? For me, I'm just thankful because as my brain is being destroyed and fried up, I had a moment where this was this obvious. So whatever painting of the, who they want to be, I can never let them escape. If you see who's talking to me, you see this picture of, you're going to see some neighbors wearing their pages because it doesn't take much to participate in what they do. That is part of this program, your whole ecosystem, people around you, the neighbors, people move around you as contracted. To do these things to you, to push you, to lose your, your rationality and logic, to make you accept these fucking disturbing perceptions and, and personas and memories and narrative they've been planting in your brain to try to get you to accept this trashiness. Delusionality at the highest level. It's disgusting. These people are trash. And in my brain, the way they've been trying to make me acceptive of this. For example, right now, in my brain, they just try to counter reality, manipulating memories of when I was walking to the gym. And there's this, I'll give him 13 years old, like between 12 and 13. And it's like, no, he's younger than that. No, this is, like it matters. To try to make me accept this pedophilia, like what the hell? Disturbing, sad piece of shit. Delusional. To try to get you to accept this. Target individual. You're going to hear the obvious patterns of what they do. It is so clear that they torture us target individuals in these disturbing ways. Where they want us to be something that we're not. To try to get you to accept these things. And when one of us cracks and and end up doing these horrible things. These people are very quiet. Nobody talks about this. So to all my target individuals, listen. Listen to what happened. And listen to all the stories that you hear that 
that just shows the validations and patterns of what they've been doing. In May last week, from New York Times, I'm Michael Barbaro. This is The Daily. Today, the mass shooting that occurred in May last week, killing 18 people, was the country's deadliest of the year. It may also have been one of the most avoidable. Army reservist, and the documents show that these warnings concerned his deteriorating mental health, rising paranoia and anger, and they came from pretty much every part of his life. But as we now know, none of those warnings prevented this mass shooting. Well, Nick, where should we start in the story of those warnings? You mentioned that they go back many months. I mean, the first time when the local police are really made aware that this guy is a concern is about five months ago in May when his ex-wife and teenage son go to a school resource officer. And the school resource officer calls down a sheriff's deputy to speak with the family. And in that interview, the teenage son and the ex-wife say that he has started to hear voices. He started to be increasingly paranoid and angry. They also note he has collected about 10 to 15 guns that he kept at a relative's house and brought them back to his. So they're going to the police and saying that he has access to a large number of firearms. Hmm. I mean, they were very worried about him. And I think what they also were struggling with is not understanding where to get him help and what kind of intervention might lead him to be more aggressive and more isolated. So what's the response from the local police after the family has this conversation with them? The deputy has this conversation with the ex-wife and the teenage son and seems to talk to them at length and learn a lot about Card's behavior and his career in the Army Reserves. He was in the Army Reserves for 20-plus years at that point. And the deputy and the ex-wife basically decide that the best place to get help is probably through the Army Reserve. It's people who have known him for a long time. It's people he interacts with regularly. And maybe they have a more formal system of getting someone like this help. So the deputy goes back and makes a call to the Army Reserve base and learns from them, and this is in May, that they've been aware of his declining mental health at the Army Reserve base and that they already know that something is wrong. So at this point, they have two really important data points. They have family members deeply concerned that this man is not well and has guns. And they now know that his place of work, the Army Reserves, is also very concerned about him. So what do the police do with all this information? They decide, I think, largely to leave it in the Army Reserves' hands. Hmm. So the police come up with a kind of informal solution to this problem, which is work with the Army Reserves. I think that's right. Okay, so what happens next? So the next thing we know that happens is in July. Card travels with his reserve unit to West Point, New York, for an annual training exercise. And there's a very concerning incident that takes place. They're all hanging out together at a motel, and he starts accusing them of calling him a pedophile. This is one of his paranoid delusions that comes up repeatedly. He shoves one at one point, and everyone is just freaking. what is referred to as malodorance. This is the alteration of the smell sensation so that I am often made to smell various things, including smoke, burning, dirty diaper, or baby powder, which they sometimes combine with the pedophilia type of torture, including the threat of planted dreams and vision. 
It is dramatic. It's somebody trying to end my life. It's somebody trying to end who I am as a person. It's somebody trying to take over my mind, putting thoughts of pet. This disgusting, disgusting, disgusting things. And you saw where I was going with that first word. Disgusting things that I don't even want to talk about because it makes me sick. Why? Was a mentally unstable individual? This shotgun is the primary murder weapon. On it, he etched a number of carvings, including End to the Torment, Better Off This Way, and My ELF Weapon. Alexis had been hearing voices and believed he was being bombarded by microwaves, something naval authorities knew about. There are multiple indicators that Alexis held a delusional belief that he was being controlled or influenced by extremely low frequency or ELF electromagnetic waves. And in his computer files, the FBI found this. A document retrieved from the electronic media stated, quote, ultra low frequency attack is what I've been subject to for the last three months. And to be perfectly honest, that is what has driven me to this. And so on what should have been a routine day, Alexis killed 12 people, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters. Diane, they never had a chance and still no answers as to why. So About his time spent here in New Mexico. As sick as this may sound, I've even had uh, stalkers follow me into church um, while I was in uh, Las Cruces. Uh, and in Houston, I've had uh, stalkers follow me into church uh, to harass me. May had worked as a prosecutor in Las Cruces just weeks before the shooting. In his last words, May speaks of his paranoia and coins himself as a targeted individual who's been a victim of stalking and harassment. He talked about a trip to Houston where he said cars would drive by and honk their horns every 10 minutes to keep him on the edge and agitated. Father, forgive me for what I'm about to do. Forgive me for all of my sins, past sins, present sins, any future sins. This is a common breakdown tactic of belief systems and the human will. In no touch torture, the techniques are more psychologically specialized for each target. Most common examples include homosexual targets that are forced with voices that are derogatory to their lifestyle and similar mental images. Almost all targets are forced to view child pornography in their minds. And vice versa. V2K, or voice to skull. This involves the projection of voices, noises, and music directly into my mind to communicate with me in real time and at the speed of thought. And it also includes the manipulation of thoughts, emotions, and perceptions in the person's mind. Additionally, the targeting is all highly perverted and sexual as well as just any information on the brain of a person, presumably by some kind of waves, which in the mind take the form of voices, thoughts and images and imagination. In addition to this kind of implanting information that they need, they manipulate the psyche so that the information is written into your memory. Then by stimulating the certain regions in the brain they can retrieve this information and present it as your own memory. This is the conclusion that can be made judging by the influence they have been making on me with their psychotronic weapons, for example artificial thoughts, imagination, and mental torture. Any part of the body. This technology can be used to sexually manipulate the target. It can make the target feel sexual arousal, or it can sort of turn off the
gets interrupted, you have no privacy, like whatsoever. Um, your social life is, is ruined because you start to feel like you can't trust anybody. Um, because it seems like somebody just put some kind of spotlight on you and that everybody is, uh, not really conspiring to get you, it's more of trying to drive you crazy. Um, it's more of a psychological and emotional attack than anything. And this is the first time that we've spoken out about it, um, only because I've been seeing a lot of other videos. And I think that it helps to talk about, you know, what's going on because you may be able to prevent someone else from making the same mistakes that you made. And uh, we made a lot of mistakes. We called the police. That was no help. Um, we left our home. We have quit jobs because of it. Um, we've cut friends off because of it. We've cut family members off. Um, so um, the only way to really get through something like this is to be able to vent and um, to do as much research as possible. Um, for other people that are experiencing this, that are targeted individuals, I would suggest that you start documenting as much as you can, start videotaping, recording as much as you can, um, because the thing that promotes this is that you can't prove it and that these people can stay hidden. Um, and uh, that's why it lasts for so long. You know, I'm seeing people that have been going through it since 2005 and they can't seem to get it to stop but it's because they make sure you can't pinpoint one person you know it's everybody it's all the time you know and so it discredits your character and your state of mind um, which you know starts to make everybody believe something's wrong with you you know and then you start believing something's wrong with you um, but it's not you um, and you know that it's not you. It's just hard to prove. But don't go get, you know, mental health uh, help. Don't see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Um, most of the time, they're involved too. Um, your police are involved, your firemen, your ambulance, you know, uh, people at the hospitals, you know, they're all involved. Um, Ms. Catherine Nestor. Thanks. My name is Catherine Nestor and I'm from Pennsylvania. This commission has spoken of a long history of abuse of the human research subject. Although no one mentioned MKUltra today, President Clinton recently apologized for this. My young child and I have been used as non-consensual test subjects. We have been subjected to COINTEL pro-like stalking remote neural monitoring, and electromagnetic torture, resulting in psychological and physical damage. And I won't go into the details of that because I have four pages written in here that is very similar to Connie's testimony. Please do not wait 70 years to investigate this. I ask Dr. Amy Gutman to begin today. There is new work for the commission for human subject protection on our shores. And please give us a dramatic response, Susan. To military medical ex research. Um, I too believe my experience is referred to as no touch torture, utilizing defense technologies. Um, Jonathan Reno, he basically predicted all this uh, a number of years ago in his book, Un Undue Risk. Um, I'm asking you to help initiate a congressional investigation. Uh, we've all come a long way. This is what is needed. Uh, we want to have the accounts of this extreme human rights abuse that's going on in our country uh, documented and heard, all of the accounts. Uh, we also need what was done during the Clinton administration, which is a major declassification of some of these documents that are hiding what's been going on. Um, I speak for many when I say we've suffered long enough. 
my personal experience has been 10 years. I've been vilified. I've been ostracized. I've been tortured. I have burns on my body. I'm an American. I have rights. The answer to the question, the big question today, could it happen today? The answer is yes, it is happening today. It is happening for some of us every day. I am begging for you to help us. Thank you. You feel that you've been injustice? Uh, you mean as far as the Justice Department feeling me? Well, in terms of your uh, uh, being a victim. You mean what I'm feeling? Yeah, I, explain a little bit to me how sure. you uh, perceive sure. yourself well, as being. I have actual photographs of burns on my body. When I went to my doctor, uh, the response was, how do I know you didn't do that to yourself? How do you even address that? I've passed two psychological evaluations, not one, but two. The one physician said, you're mentally sound as a bell. He said, I don't have any idea what's going on with you. When I go to sleep, when I go to try to sleep, I feel like I'm being lit up like a Christmas tree. I feel every cell in my body just bouncing out of my body. I can't even describe it. I get uh, electric shock of my rectum. I get electric shock of my nose. I've woken up with burns on the end of my tongue. I've had burns on the palms of both of my hands. I vibrate. I vibrate. I can barely hold a piece of paper without quivering. Does that answer your question? I'm trying to find what's the source of the... The source are these exotic weapons. They talk about in 2970, that if you would pass it, it might give other communities the courage to do the same thing and show our defense department we are not the enemy. We are not to be attacked. We are not terrorists. Most of us are defenseless women. They sent me to the mental ward because they said I did uh, but ever been to boot camp in Manchurian government where the Chinese government were evil aliens, were Satan's, you know, satanic ritual abuse, uh, were, and I've heard all the stories. One guy believed it was his, uh, some 14 year old kid with an Xbox that lived next door. The trickery really is that great when you're under hypnosis that people will believe something other than a massive government uh, could do this. Um, and so anyway, what, you know, our inter my interview with Len, he very well described a typical breakdown script that's used on almost all the TI victims. TI stands for targeted individuals. Um, some of them are pretty crazy. They go, they have names like Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz, um, and those are the confusion tactics. And when they're breaking down the ego of the human through all the pains and tortures and, and the verbal breakdown, um, these are typical CIA torture scripts. I mean, <laughs> Kabur, Kubark Command. CIA raping children and sexually assaulting children and they're not being prosecuted where, where are you oh that's, well. that's the thing the had sexual contact with a two-year one contractor arranged for sex with an undercover the Department of Defense acknowledged that dozens of Pentagon staff members or contractors had such images in 2014 the inspector general of the entire office which oversees examinations. This is so disturbing. At a symposium in 2016, Daniel Payne, a top Pentagon security official, said that when workers' computers were examined, the amount of child porn I see is just... Why aren't these people weeded out? Why are so many right. pedophiles allowed to be given top-level security clearance? Remember, these aren't just people walking in off the street and saying, hey, can I get hired? Can I get a job? You're put through an extremely rigorous background check screening process. It's called an SSBI single 
Scope background investigation. There are people, they interview you, they interview your family, they interview your contacts, they go through your online footprint, they go through everything. So why is it that when they're going through these footprints, they're not checking, these digital footprints, they're not checking for so many pedophiles getting through their ranks. If it were up to me, you need to go into Congress and Congress needs to launch a brand new church committee, number one, to talk about domestic surveillance operations, but number two, to ask the question, why are there so many pedophiles sitting behind? And I am a victim of organized stalking electronic harassment, microwave torture, V2K abuse, and I'm asking you to help us end this crime against humanity, which has impacted men, women, children all around the world. Hi, I'm Wan from Malaysia. My family are targeted individuals. We are victims of cyber torture, and I will not give up. I will fight to the end. And I'm a victim of organized stalking. Uh, we need stalking, this to stop. Electronic That's harassment. It. And I'm speaking to you on International Targeted Individual Day. I live in the U.S. in Illinois. And I'm a victim of organized stalking. Uh, we need stalking, this to stop. Electronic That's harassment. It. Microwave torture. I've been a targeted for nine years. 24-7. Please become more aware of this crime and those that the crime is being committed against. We need your support and help in ending this crime. Hello, my name is Wendy Brown. I'm a targeted individual who is living in New Zealand, but my targeting began in California. I'm an American citizen and the targeting continues in New Zealand. I'm making this video in um, remembrance of targeted individual day or They would make the kids act out the kinds of torture that would later be done on me. For example, they would also sometimes make her bite her hand, threatening to make me bite my hands, as they often do. One day, she had a large, severe bite mark on her arm. She has also grabbed her crotch, saying, ow, and this was used to threaten me with severe sexual torture. <clears throat> One day, I was observed one day, I also observed her gasping for air a few times in the same way that I do when I am being more severely suffocated. The suffocation had been in a mild state for a while up until this point. Many of their torture methods are cyclical in severity. Right after I saw this child being suffocated, then I began to experience very extreme suffocation all day, every day, for about two months straight, and that's also when they made it worse when I eat. Then I also work with a four-year-old little girl with Down syndrome, as well as her five-year-old sister who also has Down syndrome. I observed both of these girls suddenly grabbing their genitals in pain and verbalizing, ow. I observed this at least on one or two occasions for each of them during their separate sessions. During one session, I observed one of my three-year-old clients suddenly grab his crotch and lean forward in his chair. And then he made a frightening grimace of severe pain. I asked him what was wrong and if he needed to use the restroom, but he said no to having to use the restroom and was not able to verbalize anything more due to his language delay. He looked puzzled and bewildered. Even though I had stated that it was time to do more work right before this incident, I quickly just let him play another game and he quickly returned to his joyful, happy self again. In other sessions, he has also grabbed his crotch and said, ow, while looking up at me. Occasion, I was told I was gonna to be shot in the face and it was an older guy. He was like really, really disgruntled and pissed off. Yeah, he's gonna sure be shot in the face. You know, film like an angry ass old person. You know, then a couple of days later, a female said the same thing. Don't get shot in the face. You know, stupid shit like that. But what I really noticed is with the voice of skull, it's a bunch of females. You know, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> really? You're not a woman. What 
real woman would stalk another female or sit back and allow that to go on. You you really think they they think it's nothing wrong with them, basically. You know, they call me a retarded bitch and all of this here, but I was top of my class and everything that I did. You know, every class I took, I excelled in my I excelled academically. In May last week, from New York Times, I'm Michael Barbaro. This is The Daily. Today, the mass shooting that occurred in May last week, killing 18 people, was the country's deadliest of the year. It may also have been one of the most avoidable. and have had a decent education. I live in El Dorado Hills, California, with my and have had a decent education. I live in El Dorado Hills, California, with my wife of 14 years, Lorna, and our five children. Nicole is 15, Patricia 14, Christopher 13, Dylan 9, and Avery 16 months old. Not only have I been going through this, but my entire family has suffered right by my side. We have all experienced the same type of harassment on different levels. We have all suffered the same symptoms while this harassment was going on. Some of our physical symptoms include severe tooth decay and vision loss, unexplained rashes and burns, severe headaches, mood swings, anxiety, thyroid problems, high blood pressure, heart problems, vision loss and cancer. Two of my children were born premature, which I attribute to this. Our son Dylan, now age nine, was born very premature. He was born at 31 weeks. During her pregnancy with Dylan, we were being targeted more so than other times. At the delivery, there were to see every night. Then I thought how that could happen, but then I told them that they would never take my will and since we all know how the psychopaths groups work with what the TI says or does, then they started during the nights to run some kind of beam where suddenly I've been wakened up at 3 o'clock in the mornings and some kind of voice comes and say phrases, sound incomprehensible and some other times can actually catch what is saying, ITS not my voice, a different voice, and I realize that they are trying to program for me to take it in a way that I won't notice a possible change in my behavior. Of course this is not new, because one main thing this program is out there, is called behavior modification for the indesirable, and that's one of the excuses this groups give for the neighbor T.O. join, deception. I, I learned to talk back, in my mind, during the process when I was awakened, and I would say demeaning things, that I cannot repeat it in this blog, you know what I mean, since they had violated me for so long, I decided to aggravate them with words, in my mind, I can hear my own voice, I told them I'm going to make you pay for all of the years of torture that I've taken and all you are going to hear is aggravation, for every single second of my privacy that you have taken away, from me and my family. Then said this the slaves began a program of perversion, first was with my dog, I am very playful with my pet, and suddenly one day that I was petting him I felt strange, in the sense of the word. I thought, this is strange, and then afterwards that strange sensation continued, then in that moment I realized that was impost, so I thought, look at this loosers, don't know how to put me down, and they are doing this. So I told them that I know what you are trying to do, and I started laughing, and then I said again out loud, you'll never take my will, ASS, so just to show them that I meant what I said, I kept playing with my dog, and even though that attacks continue, I don't let them get me. Today, they continue with the programming of perversion, but this time they are aiming in the use of people, better said young people, also children and homosexuals. When I aggravated them, I usually called demeaning names, and one of them is referring to homosexuals. For me, all of the slaves are misfits, society haters, scumbags, etc. No, I don't have anything personal against them, homosexuals, but as my way to aggravate the slaves, and since they love to use children for the torture and stalking, street theater etc. Especially teenagers for the stalking at close range with an attitude, they are using them during my sleep in the perversion. 
program, and so you can imagine what the slaves of torture are pretending to do to me. In the last days, as today September 9th, 07, anything I do, either watching TV or reading of whatever I'm doing, they brush me sort of say, I feel like I'm aroused all day and I feel the palpitations in my genital. About his time spent here in New Mexico. As sick as this may sound, I've even had uh, stalkers follow me into church. Um, while I was in uh, Las Cruces uh, and in Houston, I've had uh, stalkers follow me into church uh, to harass me. May had worked as a prosecutor in Las Cruces just weeks before the shooting. In his last words, May speaks of his paranoia and coins himself as a targeted individual who's been a victim of stalking and harassment. He talked about a trip to Houston where he said cars would drive by and honk their horns every 10 minutes to keep him on the edge and agitated. Father, forgive me for what I'm about to do. Forgive me for all of my sins, past sins, present sins, any future sins.